Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are actually going to go one by one on an update of my Pathiopetalum orchids. Now, just a small backstory, I started my orchid journey back in 2020. You know, I got an orchid, a plain grocery store phalaenopsis for my anniversary, went online to figure out how to take care of it, and lo and behold did I discover this entire plant world and all these cool people and cool looking plants. And eventually, <clears throat> my orchid journey led me to Pathiopetalums. Um, I do enjoy the blooms, don't get me wrong. However, I am really in love with the foliage of a lot of my plants, mainly the Pathiopetalums. And let's go ahead and actually start in a somewhat of a chronological order of when I got the plant and I guess up until now because I don't think um, I've ever done a video like this. So we'll call this a recap. So the first path I purchased was Path Psych back in August of 2020. I actually have the dates. It was August 27th um, of 2020 and I purchased it from Etsy, a shop called The Plant Attic Shop. And again, it was my first path and She's actually right over here in two pots right now. Of course, I'll go and show pictures of what the plants used to look like, but this is Path Psych currently. So we have the one of the divisions and then another one. And I did uh, pot these in separate pots because I didn't want the pots too full. I do, people do say that paths grow slow. For me, they grow fast. And I like for my pots to be full, but I want to grow them that way. I don't want to have just be given a large specimen and there's my pot. I have a lot of pride in growing and it's simple things like that that I really, really just enjoy doing. So Again, I got that back in um, August of 2020 and I did purchase it in bloom. It has bloomed for me again, actually, just this year in uh, 2022. And after that bloom is actually when, excuse me, just before that bloom was when I had separated them into their separate pots. Oh, and happy holidays, by the way. <laughs> uh, excuse the hat, I have not bothered to go get a haircut. So we're gonna move on to the next path, which is path Linlay Kupowitz. Again, that's path Linlay Kupowitz. Oh, I forgot to mention, the last path that I did pull up there is a mix of Bellotulum and Nivium. I'm not sure if I mentioned that, but this path here Path Linlay Kupowitz was the second path I purchased off for, excuse me, also from uh, eBay from a seller called Bomb Botany, and this was September 9th of 2020. Seems easy to maintain, but it hasn't bloomed yet. Uh, it has pretty much always been a large plant, and it's a cross of, uh, it's a primary hybrid, so it only has two species behind it, and it's a cross of Malopowensi. By Delanatii. And as you can see, those leaves are just gorgeous. And I, you know, I, I think, yeah, Malapuensi is from China and Delanatii is from Vietnam, I believe. But the plants themselves look pretty close with regard to how the leaves come in. The flowers are just different. So I do really hope that this blooms for me. Doesn't seem like it's going to bloom this year. All right, moving along to plant number three. By the way, we have 37 plants to go through that I counted, and 38 including a dead one that I'm gonna show you that I saved for the video. The next one is what you call a Maudier, or, uh, and it's a vinicolor type Maudier. So Maudier basically has these two species in the background. I believe it's Laurentianum and something else that I can't remember right now, but these two species of path, paths have been bred over so many years and have made um, basically growing these uh, paths extremely easy. However, 
The one I'm gonna show you, this Maudier, is also crossed with the species called um, Charles Worthyi, and I really think that's why I have trouble with it. So when I first purchased this plant, this is from High Desert Orchids back on September 10th of 2020. Um, it looks easy, but it consistently grows. Like, as you can see, I have the stake holding it up. It grows in an upward motion and it grows so many roots that it pushes itself outside the pot quite frequently and you have to repot it maybe twice a year. And for me, I am a very, you know, one size fits all type of grower and I prefer the repot once a year, but I have made an exception. And as you can see, I did purchase this baby um, in bloom back in 2020. As you can see from the spike here, it looks like there's, oh no, it's just broken weird. The second growth then came on it and didn't do anything, uh, didn't do anything. And now we have the third growth growing now. And the reason why I have this up is because uh, it was falling over and the back of it, the back here was like completely exposed every time the plant would fall over. So I just put this up here until the roots anchor the plant back into place. And I was gonna take all my plants down to just have it get to them easier, but I kind of wanted you all to see where everything was. Um, because I know some people are very particular about where plants are. I only have a few plants and I'm extremely particular about the location. So let's move on to the next plant, which is called Del Rossi. I really like the way this plant looks. It's so funky. Um, and the leaves are pretty cool. This, uh-oh, <laughs> somebody wants to play. Um, this plant is a cross of the king of Papiopetalums, Roth's Chaldeanum, crossed with Delinatii, a, uh, I believe also Vietnamese species. I think so. I should have looked that up and wrote it down. But anyway, this is a purchase from Marlowe's Orchids back in September of 2020. Super slow grower, but again, the leaves are really nice and it hasn't bloomed for me. Let's see if I can remove this. It hasn't bloomed for me, but um, as much as I really am looking forward to the flower, I really like the leaves. I really enjoy the foliage of this plant. I like the way um, it has the upward motion of growth just straight up. It makes me think that's how the flower spike is gonna be. And I mentioned flower spike. A lot of Pavio Pebblums, you don't need a stake to hold up the flower spike. Most of them are actually strong enough to hold themselves up. It's uh, very convenient, extremely convenient. So let's move along to Path Chu Yi Rookie. Now this path is also a cross of the King of Paths, Rothschildianum, but it's crossed with a tiny, tiny, I think this might be one of the smallest paths ever, Tyanum. So Rothschildianum by Tyanum, and we have Chewy Rookie. This was also a 2020 purchase uh, back in September from High Desert Orchids, and check out the foliage. I didn't have a bloom on this, I did purchase it in sheath and it never developed the bloom. And I think it's because when I first purchased this, I didn't have a good grow light set up. So I don't believe I had enough light um, to support an actual flower. But the plant has given me tons of growth. It grows pretty slow, but so much. And the leaves are thick. The leaves on this are really thick. Like the, the plant is extremely sturdy. And I believe there are one, two, three, four, five, six. There are seven growths on this. So hopefully when it decides to bloom, I get more than one. And with Rothschildian being a multi-floral type of flower where you can have multiple flowers in bloom at once and then tying them being tiny, I'm just really, really interested on how that, how that show is gonna turn out. So the next plant is my Leucochylum, which I believe the tag in here used to be Codofroye, and I switched them by mistake, so I'm not actually sure which plant is which. But I did do a video separately on this. 
This is one of my favorite paths just because of the leaves, the size, the fact that the bloom on it was so spectacular. And of course I'll show it, but I really, really love this bloom. And it bloomed for me this summer right in the U-Haul truck as I was moving because uh, I left New York, excuse me, New York. I left DC with the plant in bud, and then I arrived to Nevada with the plant in bloom. And I think she stayed open for a month in my bathroom. And she was in like a nice gold pot because so nice. And as you can see, I have this old growth here with the dead flower spike and then the new growth that is just shooting out. And it seems that these plants like to be sort of away from the light. I used to have them in the shelf, but they seem to grow faster on the floor. Hmm. And yes, no, I'm mentioning that because that's one of my paths that I um, particularly keep away from the lights, but in light, just away from it because it just seems to respond better uh, to that environment. The next path I have is Path Warden. Uh, now I do have the names of this one, so the, this is a Maudier cross. So the crosses behind Warden are Maudier cultivar Los Ojos, and it's crossed with Holdenii cultivar the Queen. And she is back here. I like this plant. Very reliable, very sturdy. Um, she has bloomed for me once. Is this a bloom coming? Nope, too skinny to be a bloom. So she has bloomed for me once and she's a, uh, I think a dark uh, purple color. And I'll definitely put the bloom up to show you all. And she was huge. It's a huge bloom. I think I have a picture of um, the bloom next to my hand, but I'm not sure. If I do, of course I'll put it up. But as you can see, the plant is very pretty when it's not in bloom. And of course, I'll show you the pretty bloom that it came with. And it's basically a very easy non-fuss plant. It's from Norman's back uh, September 2020. And um, this growth here actually, I think, started coming up last December. And it's, it's looking good. It's looking real good. Let's put her back. And move along see what our next plant is. So our next plant is Barbatum Variation Negritum or Nigritum. Whoa, I won't say that again because that didn't sound too good. <laughs> um, September 24th, 2020 and a purchase from High Desert Orchids. I purchased this in bud. Yeah, this was definitely in bud when I purchased it and it bloomed. And now she's clumping up, or he's clumping up. I feel like Barbatum or Barbatum is a masculine name when I say it. <laughs> this, this little one, I got a new puppy and he's extremely vocal. He's very vocal. So don't mind him in the background, that's Oscar. So this is Barbatum, Barbatum, and the variation is Negritum. And it's a vinny color or very, very purple flower. I, b I believe it's actually not called Vinny Color because it has the white in it, and I can't remember the name when it's not Vinny Color or Album, but it'll come to me, and I'll probably say it later on in the video. But yeah, a species plant, again, back in 2020, and it seems to be growing very fast under these lights here. In DC, it did grow very fast, but it didn't clump up like this. It just recently started putting out all these um, growths. And I'm hoping for multiple blooms when the bloom season or blooms do happen to come by. Next, we have Magic Lantern. Path Magic Lantern is a primary hybrid, so it only has two species in the background. The species are Micranthum and Delinatii, two very pink flowers. This is one of the paths that I did. I sort of bought this for the flower because I already had leaves that were very similar. Because I, you know, I do have that Lindley Kupowitz and it was a very similar looking in the picture. But you can see it's very different in size. And the blooms are gonna be very different as well. My Krantham, I think, China, Delanati, Vietnam. So let me see here. I'm learning that a lot of China paths um, do like 
cooler weather and it's because a lot of them are coming from like areas like the Himalaya mountains where it's cold and dry uh, like my Ferengetum and we'll get to that soon. So again, my ma magic lantern, <laughs> I kind of brought that up and put it back really fast because I'm waiting for the bloom. It's a lackluster plant for me because I have a lot of ones that look like it, but I really want to see what the bloom looks like. And that was also September 2020 from High Desert Orchids. So we'll move on and circle back to Etsy because my Ho Chi Minh, which is also another primary hybrid um, Papiopetalum, would be a cross, again, of Delanatii and Vietnamensi. So these are actually sort of twin paths because they're both from Vietnam and they look very, very, very similar. But the bloom, oh my God, the blooms were so nice. I'm gonna show you pictures of these blooms. Here is the plant. Uh oh, I feel a sneeze coming on. Here's the plant which I actually divided. So here is, let's see, two old growths on here that have bloomed, bop and bop. Then we have a tiny new growth here coming in and this big growth here coming in. And this division here in the cup that's on the floor also came from this pot, fell apart when I was repotting them. So this one just stayed in its own little cup and that one stayed in the pot. Very, very nice blooms. I, I thoroughly enjoyed this plant. I didn't think that I would enjoy it as much as I did because the blooms that I ended up getting didn't look like the picture. <laughs> and there, are, there were double blooms on it, so I was very excited about that. Um, it bloomed for me on one flower spike, but the one spike had two flowers. So that was pretty nice because I always feel like things like that mean that you're giving them either close to or you're giving them spot on optimal care and let's go ahead and move along so the next path is path hung shung starry also a september 2020 purchase but this one was from marlo's orchids and i don't know it just hasn't done well ever um the the cross but it's a, it, i don't even know like what the flower is supposed to look like and I think this was given to me because the plant that I had originally ordered was sold out. And I don't know, I don't, I'm not really a fan of the plant. I, I'm assuming from the leaf structure that's either gonna look something like a multifloral or a bulldog. The plant is a cross of Path New Downlands by Path Wesleyanum. And it's just been a struggle bus plant because I, I think the background is like these path species called Concolor and Goldifroye and Insignia or in, Insigne. But it wasn't a plant that I expected to get, but it's still alive. So there you have it. <laughs> the next plant is gonna be my Delanatii, which is a species from Vietnam. And this is, I, as you heard mentioned before, I do have a couple of crosses, but this is the original species plant. And this one I uh, purchased back September 30th, 2020 from High Desert Orchids. And there, I did get it to bloom. It was pretty wonky back in the winter of 2021. I believe it was December. And I'm uncertain if it was like the environment, my care, or just the first bloom. But the foliage is pretty nice on this one. So I do enjoy this plant. I know a lot of people probably think it looks just like the, all the other foliage, but it doesn't to me. It really doesn't. Um, the, the, the spacing of the purple slash violet here is different. And the modeling itself is, is different as well. There's more green in this plant, actually. But I'll definitely, if I haven't already, put that picture up. Because I do like my Delanatii. I, it's one of the coolest sounding um, paths anyway. And I know some people pronounce it Delanati, but I do like the Delanatii. It has two eyes at the end. It's just cooler that way. Moving along, we have the Path Lowii. So when I first purchased this plant, I did purchase it in bloom because the crosses, so it's crossed with itself, another Lowii but the names of the crosses were Paul, my name, and Purple Heart, which was the other plant. This is the plant right now, which about a week or two ago, it was two growths and 
I lost the uh, second growth to rot and just cut it off there. And now we have a pretty firm growth. And I think the bottom of this actually looks slightly bulbous. So we might be getting a bloom next year. But anywho, this plant is now just a Richardianum. So earlier I did mention Lowii. It used to be a Lowii variation, Richardianum. And then when I purchased it, the tag came as just Richardianum. And I see it like that online. So I'm assuming that it was reclassified some at some point. But anyway, it's a very nice multifloral. I'll show you the flowers. It bloomed for me in DC while I had the plant in my bathroom, but I did also purchase it in bud. So I can't take responsibility for the health of those blooms. I maintain them pretty well, but I think they would have been better if I had it in the better uh, setup as I eventually would have moved on to. But I'm expecting to see some pretty blooms hopefully by the end of next year. And let's move on to Path Therianum. So this is going to be another species path that I uh, purchased from High Desert Orchids. But this one was a little later, two weeks later from the low EI in October of 2020. And Therianum is one of those uh, species I mentioned earlier about liking the cold. This is from the Himalayan mountains in China. And it did bloom for me, let me tell you. This path, it looks so unassuming because it's strappy and... You know, the modeling is extremely, extremely faint, but it's there. But the bloom, oh man. And for some reason, when I see the bloom, it reminds me of the Himalaya Mountains or like just that whole like area. Maybe, I'm not sure if that's Indochina, but it just gives the vibes of some of like the patterns that you see in the cultural items over there with like the frilly uh, flowers and even the coloring. I, I really think this is a cool plant and it seems to only give me one growth at a time, regardless of my condition. So I'm just gonna cater to how it's growing and not change anything on that one because I really, really, really love that plant. And moving along, we have the Henry Anum. Forgive me here because I'm not sure if this is it, but I think it is. Yay, so this is Henry Anum. When I first purchased it, I think it was pretty small. And it attempted, excuse me, I purchased it in October 29th of 2020. It attempted to bloom like Christmas, New Year's and somewhere the bud blasted. And I think it was because I had done like a shift in my growth space from the bathroom to the living room. And it was on the bottom of the shelf, extremely close to the radiator. And I don't think the, uh, flower enjoyed it but the plant did because after it bud blasted it just completely started clumping like crazy and i'll show you some before and after pictures as well hopefully we get a bloom from that because the blooms on the henryanums are nice i believe they're pink and yellow and it's a waxy i like to call it gummy it looks like a gummy type of not in texture but like it just looks like a gummy when you look at the bloom Next, we have my Belosum variation Anamensi. And the funny thing is that I just had it and I don't know where I put it, but it's not, oh, here it is. It's not doing well, guys, like at all. But this is my Belosum, and I'll show you before pictures because it's a, oh man, it was gorgeous. I purchased this back in October 29th of 2020 from High Desert Orchids, and it did, excuse me, it does have the tag there. It's a, uh, um, a cultivar called Chax Warrior and the flower, oh man, the flower was so nice. It had bloomed just a month after purchase and the flower was like this uh, brick red and, and uh, golden rod type of yellow and it, it's furry. I'll, I'll put some pictures up, but I'm really hurt that the plant is struggling right now and I don't think it's gonna make it. I don't want to disturb it too much, but it doesn't have any roots in that pot. Like, not a single root, and that's just not a good look for any plant. Oh, man. So next we have a species uh, path, and the species is, let's see, Malopoensi. This is one of my dead flowers. And I'm, my dog. I think he wants some attention. Say hi, Oscar. <laughs> He's just over here sniffing all the plants. He knows that he's not supposed to nibble them. 
But he, he does it minimally, so I don't, I don't mind. Oh, I can't get this plant. So this is my Malibu onesie, and I'll show you pictures of when I first bought it, because it was such a nice looking foul, excuse me, a nice looking Pathio Petalum, and now it's dead. See, in this plant world, everyone thinks that because you have a nice looking shelf that you just automatically have a green thumb for everything, but womp womp. And I don't know why this plant died because I kept it very moist. I let it dry like I always have. And I, I really believe it was the environment change here. But anywho, I bought this back November 4th, 2020 from High Desert Orchids and it was a very slow plant. Um, I got it in bud. I believe at the end of 2021, because I remember moving here while it was still in bud and I lost it. It completely blasted this August and the plant was dead by November. And I don't know if it was like all the energy that went into that and to try and to keep that bud alive because the bud died extremely slow to the point where I just thought it was going to open deformed and it just died. And then the plant just started declining. So normally when plants decline, what I do is, I know it sounds backwards, but I kind of scale back on the watering because I don't want to keep the pot too moist. I actually want it to dry because I know the roots are probably dying and it's throwing off some of the roots because it no longer has a stable structure. But uh, yeah, she's gonna go in the garbage after this. And that's why when I started this video, I said I had 38, but it's really 37, because bye-bye, Malo Puensi. But on to good news, Shirley Amundsen. So Shirley Amundsen is also a purchase from one of my favorite nurseries that I keep mentioning, High Desert Orchids. And she came to me back in November 4th of 2020, and she's bloomed twice. I think she's my easiest Pathio Um As you can see, the two growths at the end, those are the two older growths that have bloomed and I cut the spikes off. And now she has a spike now in bud coming with another new growth here and then a new growth in the back that's in between those two right here. And I, I love this plant. She's a beautiful like pink, yellow and green type of color and she grows pretty easily. I forget to water her all the time because I get so caught up in like not trying to move it because I don't like to move the plants while they're in bud. So sometimes I even forget to water her and she's completely fine. And once she opens, she's coming to work with me. So uh, I think my, I hope my colleagues will be excited about that. Our office sometimes is a bit dry. Anywho, moving on to Cheryl Ann Boyd. So, Papio Petalum, Cheryl Ann Boyd. Well, oh, I have a coworker named Cheryl. Cheryl Ann Boyd is what you call one of those complex hybrids, bulldog Papio Petalums. So these you'll not only see in the flower shop, but rarely on occasion, maybe even the department store, because they're pretty easy to grow right with your house plants. And this path is from Norman's Orchids back from November 6th of 2020. And she's a cross specifically of Winston Churchill times Rosaline, which are also complex hybrids. So this is a pretty complex flower or plant in general with a lot, lot, a lot of species in the background. And it hasn't bloomed for me because when I first got it, I guess I couldn't get the care right. I think I was overwatering it because it would grow a leaf and drop a leaf and grow a leaf and drop a leaf. But as you can see now, one, two, three, four, five, six, six leaves and one coming in. And as this leaf is big and the next one that came in was small because of the moving stress. This plant also bounced back pretty well though. So I, I don't even know if I'd call it stress or just like trying to adjust, thinking that it wouldn't need such big leaves anymore. Let's go on to our next plant, which is the Micranthum. Woo! I don't know what to say about this one. This is like a half, this plant done, tried to put a flower out for me twice and failed both times. So also a high desert orchid purchase back in November, 2020 on November 20th. So again, bud blast twice, not sure why. The plant, I used to actually grow it in my window in DC and it seemed pretty okay with the cold because that's when it put out the bud. And then I put it under the lights to support the growth of the flower and it died. 
So I just kept it there and then they put out another bud. Again, died. So I'm not too sure. I think next time it puts out a bud, I'm going to try to keep it more on the drier side. Um, but as you can see, I do keep this plant because we do have a growth here at the bottom that's tiny and this one is still growing. This one dying back here, just horrible. And I think that's one of the ones that had a bud inside. The bud died and the plant itself, that division that it was on just went with it. Next we have Path Primulinum. So let's get behind here. <laughs> I'm like regretting not moving these plants before now. I should have just put some of them on the floor. So here's Primulinum. And Primulinum is a very special path. It's what you call a sequential bloomer, which means that she puts out a flower spike, pretty long one, and then she puts a flower on it drops a flower, puts another flower out, and the spike kind of grows in with the sequence of the flowers. So I purchased this back in February of 2021. So we have a big jump from November there. It's probably my, uh, my refund check. So this is Primulinium and the variation is Flavum, which means that the flowers are a very light green, yellow, lemony lime color. And in February of 2021, I purchased this with the two growths and uh, it had like an old growth and then a new growth on it and it started to put out a bloom and it bloomed in January of 2021, excuse me, of 2022. So it bloomed basically the following year and it just stopped blooming this September. Yeah, pretty great. And I don't know if people can see this, but this old flower spike actually came on the original growth this is the one that bloomed for me here and this one hopefully will bloom this year I'm, I'm, I like primulinum a lot because the sequential blooming um, also does allow for you to have multiple flowers at one time I've only had two at one time but I've seen a couple of people with up to five I believe or maybe four anyway anything above two to me is really nice I like the number three so moving on, moving on to February 24th of 2021, we have one of my favorites. <laughs> You'll probably hear me say that a lot, but I just have so many reasons for liking. Pav Dal Goldie. Look at that. That I, I, and this is a, I believe this is a five and a half inch pot. It's a pretty, pretty big plant. Dal Goldie is a cross between the King of Paths, which is Ross Chaldeanum, and Arminiacum, which is a super canary yellow flower. And I can't wait to see the blooms. So again, I purchased this back in 2021, and I love how sturdy the foliage was and how sturdy the blooms are. It's a very, very thick plant. But I purchased this in sheath, and you can see the remnants of the sheath there but it never bloomed. It never even like processed a, blood, a bud. However, as you can see, the growth has been great, uh, maintaining it under my lights. And I now have two new growths, bam and bam. Um, excuse me, two new growths, bam and bam, because these are the original portions and these are like brand new here. Was that in focus? <laughs> original portion, original portion brand new brand new and i i enjoyed this plant even outside of bloom i really enjoy that plant outside of bloom if i had more light in my house it would definitely be sitting somewhere like on my coffee table next we have path train lianianum i have no idea how to say the name of i don't know how to say the name of that plant but this is my path, train lianianum. Here we go here. It's a, it's a pretty tiny one, but I have it in a large pot because the root system is pretty extensive. And this one was purchased back in also February 24th of 2020 from High Desert Orchid. So it was probably a haul and it was a tiny growth, but now as you can see, it's kind of clumping up. I'm, losing some leaves but that's pretty normal for this season and i haven't had a bloom but the pictures 
This bloom is so creepy. I, I'm gonna be in love with it. And I also have another pack that has this species in the background. And the bloom looks like the, the species, like Trainlianianum. Man, I just feel like I'm butchering that name. Is it Trainlianianum? I don't know. But anywho, let's move on to not one of my favorite packs anymore because it's so easy but I definitely appreciate her. And this is QF Winona. Now, I purchased this also with the same haul, February 24th of 2021. And, ooh, I didn't wash these leaves, but the leaves are normally pretty shiny. As you can see, she re resembles a lot of my past, but she blooms. She bloomed three times. So again, I purchased this in February 24th of 2021. She bloomed June, 2021. March of 2022 and ju just this past September. And the blooms are just as tiny as the flower. Excuse me, as the plant. <laughs> Let's see. I uh, love QF Winona. Love QF Winona. That's a freaking cute name. So next we have Path Catherine Brio, which is a cross of Leucochylum and Delanatii. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys, QF Winona is a cross of Leucochylum and Nivium, which are sort of very similar. And this one's a cross of Leucochylum and Delanatii. So here we have Cat Brio, and I'll show you a picture of the bloom because she just bloomed for me this year, but I did purchase her back in 2021 in March from Norman's Orchids. And again, cross of Delanatii by Leucochylum. However, when this cross was made, Leucochylum was not its own species. It was a variation of another path called Godefroye. And that's why this is called Cat Brio. Because now that Leucochylum is its own species, the cross with Delanate is called something different. So again, I really like the purple undersides of this plant. It's really nice. So I, I like to put it on high shelves when it blooms so that you can look up at it and enjoy the foliage and the bloom. But this bloom was so nice i enjoyed it and i don't think it wasn't like awesome amazing bloom like ho chi Minh, but it is a really nice bloom it, it's almost like one of those statement pieces and again you'll see the pictures <laughs> sorry about the shakiness there my dog is like nibbling on the peperomia down there and i don't think he should be well he almost did next let's move on to tonsum Paftonsum is a species, so there's nothing in the background. It's just Paftonsum, and it's also um, purchased from 2021. And Tonsum is from High Desert Orchids in March, and here we go. <laughs> it's as tiny as it looks, and it wasn't this tiny when I purchased it. It was a pretty decent-sized plant in a four-inch pot, and I lost that division, and I now have this. But it's growing. It hasn't lost any of those leaves, even though... I see, let's see, it may be losing this leaf over here soon with that yellowing that I'm seeing at the bottom. But I don't really remember why I purchased this plant. Like, I, I think it might've just been in a haul with the next plant. So the next plant is um, similar as you can see, I do a lot of my collection. I have species and then I have their crosses. So this one is called Favor Long. Miracle, I believe, yeah. And it's a cross between Henrianum and Leucochylum, both species that I have. And as you can see, it's taken after both of their sizes being so tiny. No bloom on this one, and the growth is so slow. Oh my God, the growth is so slow. It's just a slow plant. Nothing really much to say about that, other than I think it was registered this year. I think it's a 2022 cross. Um, but if I don't know if I mentioned it, High Desert Orchids, March of 2021, same purchase as the Tonsum. And let's see what we have next. So the next Paphio Petalum has a weird name. I, I don't know. I'm assuming it's Hawaiian, but I may be wrong. It's QF Ka Ehuhakai. <laughs> and it's uh, Barbatum or Barbatum by Satchel's Legend. So I am expecting um, this flower to be very, very, very unique. 
And a lot of times when the leaves have all this burgundy, maroon, that finny color, most of the time it's indicative of the plant. So anyway, this uh, pretty lackluster plant, I'm, I can't say I'm very impressed with it. I was purchased from High Desert Orchids back in March of 2021 and it bloomed in July of 2021 and only half opened and then it bloomed in March 2022 and it opened more but not fully and then over the summer when I had my plants in my northern window it became extremely stretchy so the plant like wasn't this long and it's weird because it's attempting to put out roots well it attempted to put out roots with dry because Papio petal, petal and roots cannot exist outside a pot. They need consistent moisture and cover. But I hope the plant blooms again for me. It's nice and clumpy, so maybe we'll get multiple blooms. And my dog keeps going to my feet, so let me pick him up. Let's see what we have next. Ooh, Pap Albertine. So Path Albertine is a cross of Venustum. Venustum is one of my favorite species paths of all times because of the foliage. I do like the flower, don't get me wrong, but the foliage. So this is a cross of Venustum crossed with Acmodontum, very similar to Shirley Admonson. Um, purchased from High Desert Orchids back March 17th of 2021, and it attempted to bloom in December of 21, but bud blast. <laughs> But anywho, I really don't mind the bud blast because you see the modeling on here? I love this modeling. This modeling is um, indicative of the Venustum parent, which is one of my favorites. And it just reminds me of like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or something, I don't know. It, it's really pretty to me. And I don't mind the fact that I, I lost the bud to bud blast, though I would like to see it eventually. Moving on. We have De Perly. Ooh, De Perly is a pretty cool one too. And I purchased this one from Path Paradise back in April 23rd to 2021. And let me tell you, they have really good reviews and I understand why. So I'll show you the pictures of the blooms, but as you can see, the plant is pretty, pretty vigorous. I've failed on missing waterings with this one. And again, the leaves have never shriveled or anything or shown me signs of it hating the environment and again this is a purchase from path paradise back in april of 2021 grade a nursery um i purchased it in bud and then it bloomed uh by june of 2021 that same year and then it bloomed again in december of 2021 and the blooms in december were oh, they were immaculate so the species behind this De Perly plant are Primulinum, which I have, the sequential bloomer, and Delinatii, the one from Vietnam that I mentioned a lot. And it's pink flowers and they basically sequentially bloom. So it puts out that spike that we mentioned earlier. It puts out a flower, drops a flower, put out a flower, drops a flower. And that's what your sequential bloomers do. However, this one gave me two flowers at one time without dropping that first one. So I thought that was cool. That was really nice of it to do. Uh, again, just really good care. Next we have Gloria Noggle. So Gloria Noggle is one of my king of Papiopetalum crosses. So we have that Ross Chaldeanum that I mentioned earlier. And it's crossed with the Micranthum. I don't have a Roth. I don't know why. But I do have a Micranthum that I showed you earlier. And here is Gloria Noggle. So she's actually similar to a lot of the Roth crosses with regard to having slightly succulent leaves, but these leaves are a bit thin, more reminiscent of the Micranthum. And honestly, I haven't seen anyone else's Gloria Noggle that looks like this. I purchased this from a guy named Mike on Facebook through his company Triton Orchids. I say I recommend it because I had good experience and I saw really good reviews. Um, although I'm not really a big fan of like the Facebook marketplace, but I purchased this back in May of 2021 and it was in sheath. I don't have the sheath on here because that growth is no longer in existence and the sheath never put out the bud, but it gave me two new growths. And the, mm, I like the modeling, but I do just like the 
pattern of the plant. It grows, it reminds me of like a house plant. So hopefully it'll get nice and clumpy for me before it blooms because I cannot wait to see the blooms like a pink Rothschildianum. Oh. By the way, Rothschildianum is a giant Papio petalum that's like sandy, tan, brown colors. Very earth tone, but it's a, it's, it has those long petals and it, very, very nice lady slipper orchid. All right, so next we have another failure, which is by Philip <laughs> Oh man, oh man. So I thought I had one growth on here until I turned it around yesterday and saw that both of my growths are going bye-bye to rot. So I purchased this from Orchid Inn back in May of 2021 and it was growing so, so well until I put it in a plastic pot. Once I put it in the plastic pot and it wasn't drying out, I didn't catch the signs quick enough and now we have rot. And as you can see, the growth on the back is rotting as well. I'm not excited about that, but I am still treating it with Fizan treatments to see if, I don't know, hopefully it'll salvage itself or create another growth, but it's just not looking promising at all, like at all. Moving along, we only have a few left. Uh, let's go to Simplicity. I like this one. So Simplicity is also a high desert orchid purchase. I get a lot of my orchids from high desert orchids. Kelly's great and she had this live, she has this live stream where like she kind of explains the plant that you're buying and you get to chat with other people who are buying the plants live. I, I, have, I have a great experience working, I mean, interacting with them, even on her Facebook group. I, don't mean to be a spokesperson, but um, she's the reason why my hobby went down such a rabbit hole. And as you can see, I just love this flower. I love the way the medium looks. But the simplicity, she's a cross of Trainlianum, that weird one that I have, and Velosum, the red yellow one I have. I purchased this in June of 2021, again from High Desert Orchids, and it bloomed in January of 2022, and the blooms were so nice. They look like both the parents. I think it looks more like the Trainlianum, but yeah, and as you can see, it's, it's growing very well. Like, I love all the strappiness, and I just have this because if I don't, it kind of falls over in the pot and creates less room, and we all need room. Lord knows, plant people uh, suffer from lack of space of all things. So moving on to our next flower. Sorry if you can hear my notebook in the background. I'm very old fashioned. I have all my notes. We have QF Akala Lalo. So this is a purchase from High Desert Orchids back in June of 2021. And she's a cross of Delanatii and Leucochylum like I showed you earlier. However, she has a different name because she was registered when Leucochylum was already its own species. So here is QF Akala Lalo. And I love the shape of the leaves and how green the con excuse me, how green the top is and how purple the bottom of the plant is, just like the other one. Just like the other one. But the leaf structure on this one is more um, round like the leucochylum and the other leaf structure is like crossed like it has like round but edgy but I, I love these leaves love 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 um this was actually also an sort of an impulse buy because I already knew I had it um but I wanted it and it had a really cute name and the whole Lalo thing reminded me of Lilu from the fifth element so it was a Win-win for whoever picked that name. <laughs> Next we have Little Pink Viper. Little Pink Viper is also a primary hybrid. And I, I'm not sure if I specified this, but primary hybrids just mean that there are two species in the background and no more. And this one has Philippinensi by Tainum. So again, we have a large multi-floral crossed with many, 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 many. And I, this one hasn't bloomed for me yet, but as you can see, I'm losing, I think, the old growth on the back. But a new growth is coming out of the old growth. Or I don't know if, like, the leaves are stunted and coming in small, but it just really seems like that's a brand new growth. And it's growing very well. I like these leaves. I like when the leaves are sturdy and hold up. It, 
it just makes me feel like the flower is gonna be very showy. So I did experience a bit of setback when I moved here. These growths actually recently started growing. They were not moving, but not dying for quite some time. But now that she's under the light and getting her water and I got my double cup method going on, this is great. Uh, next we have another impulse buy. And I bought this because the leaves reminded me of the Venustum. The flower too, I guess a little. I think the flower on this is green. So this is Path Wardii, which is also a species. And as you can see, it's not doing too well. This was a purchase uh, back, excuse me, this year in March, March of 2020. And again, it was just like way cheaper than the Venustum. And I was like, yeah, I'll get it. And I bought it along with the final plant that I'm about to show you. So this is also from Norman's again in March of this year. And also March of this year, I bought a like a green bulldog path. So very similar to the Cheryl and Boyd, which I showed you earlier, which is gonna be red. This is called the Coco Green. So it's gonna be like a yellow green bulldog path. And it's a cross of some hybrids called Hamana Med crossed with Yi Ying Spring Most. And again, this was Norman's 2022 very much set back after the move you can see how small the leaves are now growing in compared to how big the leaves were and just like the other uh complex hybrid i showed you it's just been this single growth since i purchased it but again i only purchased this one this year so it's not surprising that there's only one single growth and guys that concludes my story for the Pathio Pedalums. So the next time I hope to be um, updating you on my Phalaenopsis, which I have, I think, less of. And I'll also include the non-paths and non-fouls in that video. Thank you again so much for staying tuned. And don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe so you can stay notified of when I post. I also post... Um, quite frequently on social media, not as frequently as I used to, but I do share my photos on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll put my handle up on the screen for you, the right path. And with that, I will leave you all with a good night. Bye, guys.